heal the world, make this a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying, but if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Hello everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Lady Cheryl and I'm happy that you're here. In this episode, I'm gonna share with you how I harvest a lot of my sweet peppers and I'm gonna show you how I save seeds from heirloom varieties and I'm also going to share with you how I preserve my sweet peppers, uh, some of them, by freezing them. And I'm going to show you how I make a really quick meal out of my canned pasta sauce. And it's something that you can do in about 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, let's get started. Hello, everybody. Here's my sun glow nectarine tree. I have it in this raised garden bed with two... Hell Haven peach trees and I've had the tree for two years and it put on uh, about four pieces of fruit this year and I bagged the fruit up this one is still firm but I noticed that this one which is smaller is very soft so I'm gonna take it out of this yellow organza bag that I put on here to um, protect it and then I'll take it in the house there we go I dislodged it nice and soft I've been working in the garden so my nails are dirty yeah nice and soft so I'll go wash it off and I'll taste test it and let you know I'm in the house now and I've washed the nectarine and I'm just amazed at how it's smaller than the other but it's ripe so let me take this knife and Try to cut it with one hand. You can see it's juicy. So I'm gonna taste it. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. It's delicious. Now I'm not gonna eat it, continue to eat and smack because I'm annoyed when people do that. <laughs> Here's a little treat that I make for my grand angels. I simply take my strawberries and puree them and I add a little honey and I slice some of the strawberries and keep them whole freeze them and they have a natural and organic popsicle and my grandkids love them okay guys here are my Texas star hibiscus they're a little late in blooming this year but it's all good because I have a lot of the flower saved I save these leaves to make tea it's been proven that hibiscus tea will lower your blood pressure and so i just want to share with you these beauties and also i want you to know that hummingbirds are attracted to them and they grow very tall i'll let you see this bed it's my tea garden bed it's just mint and um hibiscus and bees are all over the mint because they're going to seed. but when this plant blooms with a lot of flowers it's spectacular and I will capture it and share it with you during another time over here are my Mexican petunias I purchased seeds from eBay they come in several colors but this is the my favorite color purple and this is a, like a lilac color and then you can see here here are some more and this is a pinkish color and what I want you to know is they attract a lot of pollinators to your yard I have them all over the food forest the ones that you see in these little containers here I picked them up during the winter time uh, in the wood chips and then I put them in these containers and brought them into the greenhouse because I didn't want the little seedlings to freeze and I had planned on putting them around the food forest, but I have a lot of other uh, places where they reseeded and popped up all over the food forest. So I decided to leave them right here, right down in this bed where I have two pear trees right here growing in front of the greenhouse. 
yeah. So I thought I'd share with you. And every time I see a little wild purslane, I will tuck it in somewhere, as you can see I did here. These zinnias are still uh, blooming, but they're getting ready to go to seed. And I'm gonna collect the seeds in these. But it's summer, and I wanted to share some of my blessings. Let me zoom in on this fig tree. It is loaded. For the first time, I'm getting a lot of figs. And I showed you in my last video evolution of a food forest how um, this tree was started from pencil cuttings. Now, this is what you call a leaf hopper. This is what you call a leaf hopper. It's trying to hide behind that stem. Couldn't get it, but usually I can catch it with my right hand a little bit quicker. They are loving my fig trees. I mean, the fig tree is loaded. And I'm gonna tell you what my secret is for growing these fig trees. Let me walk around to the other side and show you. I shared in another video, but I have new subscribers and I wanna share it again. So now I'm on the other side and I'm gonna zoom in. I want you to see this lizard. <laughs> and he's eating the tree hoppers. Can you see it moving? Yeah, you can see it. Right over there, watch it move. Yeah, it went away. And I just saw leaf hoppers on the other side of the fig tree and I see another one and it's gone behind it. But that's okay. Here's another one right there. That's a leaf hopper. That's a leaf hopper. And I'm trying to get in to get it and I can't. And there's one. I don't know if you can see that it's gone. But that's okay. My friendly lizard is over here on the case. He's on the job. He will eat them. And what I wanted to share with you was right here is where I was going to put my set, Miho Satsuma tree. And I dug a hole right in here and I kept adding compost. And that compost is feeding this fig tree. And it has died to make sure it's on it. And I'm going to rinse it off now because it didn't last night. So this is the tree that I was gonna put there. I mean, I'm going too fast. The Miho Satsuma. And we're getting oranges for the first time. It's like a little tangerine in this loaded, this tree. But this tree can take temperatures uh, very low. I'll insert the exact uh, low temperature. I know it's like 10 degrees or something like that. But anyway, I'll insert it in the video and I can see a lot of figs on this tree and the leaf hoppers are sucking the juice out of the branches and the lizard is just creating a wonderful ecosystem um, and eating up the great the uh, leaf hoppers so this tree will go in the ground but it'll go someplace else because um, I have planned to put it right here but this fig tree is taking over so I'll find another area in the food forest where I can throw a cover on it should we get a real low temperature. Okay, I gotta go. I gotta go ahead and um, just uh, showing you more figs. I need to go and go ahead and wash all of the diatomaceous earth because I don't want uh, the bees to come over here and get it into it. A lot of people don't realize that diatomaceous earth can kill bees and other pollinators. So, we wet it, it deactivates it, and that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, I'm getting ready to harvest some sweet peppers today. These are California Wonders, red and orange. And, uh, yeah, we got a lot of nice peppers. We have small peppers up here still developing. And these are not the ones that are in the greenhouse. These are outside in front of the gazebo. So I'm gonna harvest all of them, and then I'll get back with you. For my new subscribers, I want you to know that I kept this plant alive in July. It'll be three and a half years old. And I bring it inside the greenhouse and put it into dormancy during the winter. And then I bring them out back uh, in the food forest in early spring. But this plant, is almost three and a half years Isn't old. That? Isn't that beautiful? That's amazing. All from a tiny seed.
this pepper plant is 17 months old. I started it uh, during the winter over a year ago as an experiment just to see if I can get the plant a certain size and I didn't expect for the peppers to produce but they did and I'm happy so yes you can grow peppers in your greenhouse if you have the ability to heat it when temperatures get below freezing so I kept my greenhouse with a temperature of between 40 and 50 degrees at all times during the winter but now during the day it was much hotter because the greenhouse is heated up from the sun and the plastic and the space keeps it really warm in there now if you're wondering how i know what the temperature is in my greenhouse you can see here from this photograph that i have one of the zones operating right now it's 89 degrees in the greenhouse and it's 58 degree uh 58 uh, percent humidity and so I know what the temperature is right now I'm uh, positioning the other two uh, thermometers uh, in, at different areas in the food forest so I can know where my microclimate temperature is so um, yeah you can buy this at Amazon and it's really uh, good because you don't have to be worrying about when you're reaching 50 degree or 40 degree temperatures or even freezing degree temperatures you can don't have to go outside and, and look at the thermometer. You can do it inside your home. Okay. The wonderful thing about washing your own vegetables that you grow, you know, you haven't used any pesticides or insecticides, so it's very easy to clean. You don't have to be worrying about what's on your vegetables. I love it. Hey guys, I want to share something with you. I am cooking some pasta for uh, lunch, probably dinner. And I just have some ground turkey in here with my canned pasta sauce. And I'll probably insert a picture and share it with you. And here I'm just cooking some whole wheat pasta. And all I have to do is just heat this up. I want to share with you how I'm going to save some seeds from this heirloom pepper. So all I'm doing is just cutting the bottom and the top off, and I'm just gonna push out the seeds. See them right there? All of these. Then I'm gonna take this mason jar, and I'm gonna put the seeds in there. Since I purchased the seeds that I grew these peppers from Baker Creek and they have heirloom seeds, then I know that I can use these and it'll be true to the actual fruit. So now I have it in this jar, that's enough. And I'm gonna add some water, I'll be right back. So I have the seeds in the jar and I'm just gonna shake, 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 shake and then I'll pour it through a strainer. I'll be back. So you can see here that I put them in a strainer and all I will do is just put them in a styrofoam cup and let them dry. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you can do this with store-bought peppers, but I have to warn you, you don't know what you're going to get because sometimes uh, growers have hybrids. So that means when you plant the seed, it might not be or look the same or be the same variety, I should say, that you purchase. So I personally don't recommend that you do this with store-bought peppers or fruit. You can do it. But it's best to start off with an heirloom seed so that you know exactly what you're getting. And you can share those seeds with other people. Now, after your seeds are thoroughly dry, which takes about three to four days, put your seeds in a paper envelope. 
that way if they're not all the way dry they can continue to dry out but if you store them in a plastic bag they can get moldy now let me show you how i freeze peppers you just want to take up your pep cut your peppers up no particular um size just cut them up and i'm going to do all of them like this i'm going to cut some in strips i'm going to cut some um, like you dice them. This particular one, I'm going to just dice them up because this will be going in the pasta sauce. I'll do little strips for when I'm going to stir fry them. I don't know if you could you saw that, but they're all chopped up. Now, let me show you what I'm getting ready to do. You can take a cookie sheet or you can take a little bowl and just put them on the bowl, stick them in the freezer, and once they are almost all the way frozen, put them in a little baggie because you want to be able just to break off what you need, okay? Break off the little pieces that you need. So I'm going to freeze these and I'll come back. Okay, so here are the partially frozen peppers. And I put them in a little baggie, make sure I got all the air out. I left a little opening here and they squeeze all the air out. And then you just lay them flat in your freezer. And you could put more in here. But for demonstration purposes, I just did one pepper, but I'm going to do all of them. And I'll be using much larger bags like this. And I'll be laying it on a cookie sheet. So when the temperature cools and it's time for me to make pasta sauce, all my preliminary work this concludes done. this video okay. i want you to know that i appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to watch it if you would like to make a donation to keep this channel going i would appreciate it and you can send it to my paypal me account any donation will be appreciated if you like this video please like and subscribe and tell your friends about my channel.